Hello, dear brothers and sisters. Thank you for joining Mother and Refuge in the End Times. God acts in amazing ways and allows incredible coincidences to save souls. This story that I'm going to tell you will seem fantastic, but it is real. For some unbelievers, coincidences will look incredible. And is it too miraculous that after a first prodigious manifestation there has been another just as miraculous? But such are the things that happen to both people of faith and unbelievers. Here we will tell you about two chained miracles that will fill you with wonder and devotion and also provide two important lessons for faith. A young priest was in a hospital visiting some parishioners. He walks down the hall and a nun stops him and says, Father, can you come into this room? There's a man on his deathbed. He's been here for days. We have asked the priests to come in, but he chases everyone away. He doesn't want to talk about Jesus, but he is dying, and could I visit him? The priest enters and introduces himself to the patient, and the dying man bursts out with curses. With an aggressive tone, he tells her, I don't want to have anything to do with you. Get out of here. The priest says, OK, and goes out into the hallway. But the nun is still there, and she says, Could you come back inside? But he doesn't want anything I have to offer, the priest replies. Give him another chance, pleads the nun. He then walks back into the room and says, I'm not going to ask you if you want to confess. I'm not going to ask you if you want Holy Communion. But is it okay if I sit here by your bed and say the chaplet of Divine Mercy? The old man replies, I don't care. Do what you want. The priest sits down and begins to gently pray the words of the chaplet. For his painful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. By his painful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. And suddenly the man exclaims, Enough! Surprised, the priest looks at him and asks, Why? Because there is no mercy for me. Why did you think there is no mercy for you? asks the priest. It doesn't matter, the old man replies. But the priest insists, Why do you think that? I'll tell you. Twenty-five years ago, I was working for the railroad. My job was to lower the arm of the barrier when a train was coming to prevent cars from going on the tracks. But one night I was drunk and I didn't put my arm down from the barrier, and a couple and their three young children were on the tracks when a train came, and they all died instantly. That was my fault, so there's no mercy for me. I have failed. It's over. The priest, staring at the rosary in his hands, and with tears in his eyes, finally asks him, Where did this happen? The man tells him the name of the Polish town, and the priest looks at him and says, Twenty-five years ago, my mum and dad were taking my little brothers on a trip. I couldn't go with them. They were driving through that little town. For some reason, the rail barrier arm did not go down, and while they were crossing the tracks, a train came and killed them all. I lost my entire family that night. The priest stared into the man's face and said, My brother, God forgives you. God forgave you. Then the man realized that God's mercy was also for him. And the priest asks him, Would you let me hear your confession and give you the Eucharist? The man makes his confession and receives his Holy Communion. Two days later, he dies. It is difficult to forget the sins committed, perhaps those of whom we feel most ashamed. Although we have confessed them and have received absolution for them, and it is that something broke with our sin in us, or what is worse, in someone else. But it is even more difficult for those who are far from God to forget sin, because they cannot understand the impressive mercy of God and His delicate design of life on earth, which allows us to start over after each fall. The two most important apostles of the Church went through the same thing. Peter denied the Lord three times, and Paul held the clothes of those who stoned Stephen, the first Christian martyr. The two had to face the pain for their sin, and the two knew they were forgiven and led a life of gratitude to God. God gives us hope in our pilgrimage on earth. Benedict XVI says in the encyclical Spur Salvi that hope comes from recognizing that God is with us in the world, drawing good from evil, bringing justice to victims helping us find eternal meaning in even the most ordinary activities. But the story I told you about the priest and the railway man didn't end, and you will be surprised as it follows. Because after giving communion to the man, the priest goes out into the hall looking for the nun and can't find her. He asks in the administration and they answer, We do not employ nuns in this hospital. For years the priest did not know who this nun was. But one day he went to the city of Vilnius, 
which is where St. Faustina Kowalska lived, and he goes to the convent to celebrate Mass with the nuns there. He sees a painting on the wall and says, I met that nun a couple of years ago. No, Father, you didn't, replies one of the nuns. St. Faustina has been dead since 1938. The priest then realizes that it was she who told him to go into the patient's room and then told him to come back. The whole story may raise skepticism to some, but manifestations of God happen all around us all the time if we keep our eyes open. Countless people throughout the centuries have had unexplained experiences. Terminal cancers have disappeared, leaving doctors no room for a medical explanation. Pilgrims in Lourdes and other Marian shrines have had documented healings. Indifferent atheists and agnostics have fallen to their knees with sudden, spontaneous religious awakenings. But there must be faith to be able to believe that an inexplicable event is a miracle from God. The sad reality, however, is that many have become immune to these manifestations of God and think that the supernatural is a mere fairy tale, and that is destroying the essence of human existence. How can we avoid this path of destruction of society and save the spiritual lives of the people we meet? encouraging them to take a close look at the wonderful coincidences that happen to you in life. For example, how solutions appear out of nowhere to problems that seemed insoluble to them. Some think that miracles are something big and lied to report to the world. However, we can all count miraculous episodes that happen to us all the time, like a phone call at the right time or meeting the person you were thinking of, the rain that stopped to allow me to walk where I needed to go, the solution to a problem immediately after praying, the smell of roses in some prayer of the rosary. Everyone can name their own. They are a warning that something is happening out there, that someone is operating and showing us his presence. It is that God is everywhere and at all times. Immaculate Heart of Mary, pray for us. Thank you for watching Mother and Refuge of the End Times. Please see our prayer book, Pieta of the Apocalypse, Follow the link for the details.